Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial on general OneChart orientation and access. Today, we will review how to log on to the OneChart EMR, have a general understanding of how the EMR functions, and create a patient list. First, there are two types of devices that OneChart can be accessed from here at St. Vincent's Medical Center, a standard desktop PC, and also a device known as a tap-and-go. First, if using a desktop PC and the PC is at the Control Alt Delete to Unlock prompt, showing the CTBRI slash staff user identified, follow this instruction accessing the PC with the default standardized user. The password will be provided upon your first day of orientation to the medical center. Second, if using a tap and go device, use the tap pad, which is either located on the side or rear of the monitor or on the tray of the mobile cart used on the nursing units to begin the logon process. Your first time accessing a tap and go will prompt you to enter both your user ID and your password. This will actually register your badge and associate it to the tap and go system. From this point on, when you tap in, you will only need to enter your password. Once you have successfully logged onto a desktop PC, you need to look for the icon that states one chart and looks like this. For a tap-and-go device, once logged in, you will be presented with the solution icons to access your particular application. For this tutorial, we will use a desktop PC. Double-click on the OneChart icon to continue. Once you see the list of solution icons, click on the one for your area to access that solution. For example, if you work in the emergency department, you will select the FirstNet icon. The laboratory would select the app bar icon, and nursing and physicians would select the power chart icon. Refer to your department specific processes on which application to select. To log on to the power chart solution, select the icon and wait for the logon screen to appear. If the screen doesn't appear, look in the system tray at the bottom of the screen for an icon that looks like a padlock and click on this. The logon screen should then come into focus. Once the login screen appears, enter your user ID and password as appropriate. Once you have successfully logged into OneChart, let's get a basic understanding of how our EMR is set up. For the physician signing into OneChart, your first screen display will always be your message center. Here, you can manage many types of actions that require your attention. For example, this is where you will find orders that require your signature or approval, documents that you have saved can be accessed from here, and documents identified as deficient will be listed under the corresponding category where you can complete them. You can also respond to a coding query from HIM and take appropriate action. A more detailed tutorial on message center functions will be reviewed on another video. But as you can see, looking beyond the message center, one chart is set up as most Windows-based applications with a menu bar at the top of the screen with buttons right below that allow the ability to access functionality by using either of these options. Just as an example, clicking on the View menu option and selecting Patient List will display the same function as clicking on the item on the menu bar of the same name. This same function, or access, is available for nurses as well as ancillary staff. Notice that I'm now signed in as an acute care nurse and can access the patient list function the same way. Once again, the same function is also available for a surgery net nurse by clicking on View and navigating to patient list. And lastly, for the med tech from the laboratory, setting up a patient list can be as simple as clicking on the power chart icon and when the application displays, navigating up to view and then clicking on patient list to proceed. This is referred to as universal Cerner functionality across all solutions. We will continue with the patient list functionality, having signed in once again as a physician. Well, keep in mind that the process we're about to cover can be performed by any of the users and solutions just mentioned. We'll select the button for patient list to open this function. 
immediately notice that nothing happens to display. If you already had created lists yourself or had them loaded automatically by your manager, they would display at this time on the screen. As there are no lists present, we need to create them. We will create a personal list as well as the list for a specific nursing unit using 6 South for this tutorial. First, navigate to the wrench icon, making note of the description when you hover to discover. Notice it states list maintenance. Click on the wrench. Let's get oriented to the screen that now displays. The left side of the pop-up shows available lists. These are lists that have been created previously, but not yet active for viewing. The right side of the screen displays the active list that you are currently using. To create a new list, we will click on the New button at the bottom. As the first list that we will create will be our own personal list, we will begin by selecting Custom and then clicking the Next button. When the Custom Patient List pop-up displays, there is nothing else that needs to be selected at this time. So we will name our list at this point and we will call it My Patient List. Navigate to the bottom of the screen and type in My Patient List. Nothing else needs to be done at this point, so we will complete by clicking on Finish. Notice your new My Patient List is displayed on the left side of the list box. We will need to move this to the active list side in order to use it. But first, we will create another list for the 6th South nursing unit. We will again select New. And for the patient list type this time, we will select Location and then click Next. When the Location Patient List window displays, navigate to the first folder titled Locations and click the plus sign to open the list of locations. Navigate down the list by using the mouse scroll wheel or the scroll bar to the right of the window until you come to St. Vincent's Medical Center. Once again, we will click the plus sign to open this category and immediately click the plus sign once again next to St. Vincent's Medical Center. This will then display a list of the nursing units available under this category. To review the available options, simply click the scroll bar to display a list of available nursing units and areas. It is important to point out that there are two nursing units that will not display in this list. Those units are the Inpatient Behavioral Health Unit on 9 East and our Acute Inpatient Rehabilitation Unit on 10 East. Those two areas are actually set up as individual separate facilities due to billing and reimbursement regulations. At this point, we will select 6 South by clicking the empty white box next to the nursing unit name. As the nursing unit name already now displays as the list name at the bottom of the screen, we can complete the process by clicking on Finish. We now have two new lists we've just created. We now need to make these active. First, select the 6 South list item and then notice the right arrow is now active. Click this arrow to move your list over to the active category. We'll do the same thing for My Patient List, and we will complete by clicking on OK. We are then returned to the Patient List screen, where we now see the two lists that we just created. Before we continue, it's important to note that if you want to change the display order of your list, for example, if I wanted My Patients to be the first list to display, I need to once again select the wrench icon and when the pop-up displays, I will select my patient list and click the up arrow to move the list up in the display order. Complete by clicking OK. When we return to the patient list screen, notice that the my patient list now displays first. Keep in mind, however, that when you return to the patient list screen from another function, the last list that you had active will automatically display regardless of the order that you have defined. That is why right now we happen to see 6 South being the highlighted list. That was the last list that displayed. 
Next, we need to set up our list columns so that the appropriate information displays for each patient in an order that makes sense to us. For our 6 South list, the only field displayed is Attending Physician. When you create a list for the first time, you may or may not have any fields automatically defined. But you should set them up so that they make sense to you. Navigate to the Customize Columns icon on the List toolbar and click on it. From the available columns list, we want to select those items that we want displayed on our lists. Find the column that you want. You can either select them one at a time, putting them in the order that you wish them displayed, or you can hold the control key and select each of them all at once. Doing this may mean that you have to move the columns around once they make it over to the existing column side, but for right now, I'm going to pick them individually and put them in the order that I want. I'm going to begin by clicking on the name and then click the right arrow to bring it over. Next, I want to find the patient's medical record number. Click on the right arrow. Next, I want the FIN number or account number or encounter number, patient's date of birth, the patient's room and bed, length of stay, patient's sex, temporary location, visit type, and lastly, new results. Even though I added the columns one at a time, in reviewing the list, I still want to make some changes. For example, I'm going to take the New Results column and move it all the way up to the top. Right below New Results, I'd also like to see Visit Type. Even though this is the last one in the list, I can quickly move it to the top by clicking the down arrow, and you'll notice that it moves it right to the top of the list. I'm going to put this right below New Results. As I'm OK with all of the columns that I have just added in, I'm going to save these changes by clicking on the floppy disk icon up in the toolbar to save my changes to the database. The order of your columns can always be customized by returning to the screen having accessed the Customize Columns icon from the toolbar under Patient List. To exit the screen, I'm going to click on the red X in the upper right-hand corner, clicking on Close, keeping in mind that I've already saved my changes. Notice the columns that we have just added to our 6 South patient list now display. If for some reason they did not display when you return to the screen, always remember to look at our Refresh button and click this button to refresh the screen. We now need to do the same thing for our My Patients list because even though we defined columns for 6 South, those column changes did not carry over to our customized list for My Patients. We'll follow the same procedure, navigate to the Customize Columns button, and click on this. Once again, making note that the only column we currently have defined is Attending Physician. This time, I'm going to go through and select my available columns all at once and bring them over to the existing column side all together. We'll go down through the list. I'm going to select Bed, Date of Birth, FIN Number, Medical Record Number, Patient Name, New Results. We'll select Room, Sex, Temporary Location, Visit Type, and Nursing Unit. Click on the right arrow to bring all of those columns selected over, and notice that they appear in the exact order that I selected them. In reviewing my existing columns, I see that I want to move some things around. I'm going to find my New Results column, and I'm going to put that up at the top. I'm going to move Visit Type right below New Results. Patient Name will go up under Visit Type followed by room, bed, date of birth. I want to move my patient numeric identifiers up under the name, so I'm going to take medical record number and move that up, followed by FIN, review my list, and if everything looks acceptable, all I have to do is click on the floppy disk icon to save the changes to the database. And I'm going to complete the process by clicking on the red X and I'm returned to my patient list, and you'll notice that there are no patients displayed. However, all of the columns that we have just defined now display. It's important to note at this point that any location type list that you create is to be considered a dynamic list in that it will be updated automatically as patients are admitted and discharged from that particular location. 
Your custom My Patients list, however, is not dynamic and requires you to maintain it, meaning the only way to get a patient on that list is for you to add the patient to the list, and conversely, the only way to get a patient off is for you to remove it. We're going to first review our six South location list that we just created, and we'll now demonstrate how you can add a patient from the Sixth South list onto your My Patients list. To add a patient from Sixth South over to My Patient list or from any of the other lists that we have created, find the patient that you want to add from the list and simply right mouse click and select the option for Add to Patient List. And then slide over and select My Patient List. And although it appears that nothing has happened, we're going to navigate back to My Patient List. Once again, click on the Refresh button. And now the patient that you just added now displays. Although you added the patient to your custom list, the patient did not come off of the 6th South list. You can now remove the patient by highlighting the name and clicking the Remove Patient icon from the toolbar. Or you can simply right mouse click on the name navigate to the option for Remove Patient from List, select this, and the patient has now been removed. In closing, it's important to point out when using the Patient List functionality, you are allowed a maximum number of 10 patient lists to be active at any given time. If you attempt to add more than 10 lists, the system will automatically alert you that you have exceeded the maximum allowed number of patient lists and it won't let you add to the active side of the screen. Even though you have already achieved the maximum number of active lists available, you can always move an active list to the available side and conversely take one of your lists from the available side of the screen and move it to active, which will then allow that particular list to be viewed. Notice we did not receive the error message because we have stayed within the 10 allowed active lists defined by the system. This completes the tutorial for general one chart access and creating a patient list.